Hello, I'm going to talk to you today about using the Facebook SDK for Unity. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to take our example app, FriendSmash, which is what you see here, and I'm going to show you how to get this project yourself, uh, set up a new app on the Facebook developer site. Uh, I'll show you the code it takes to do some of the some of the social things that you see right here. Uh, and then I'm going to demo the completed app on Facebook Canvas to show you just how easy it is to build FriendSmash and run on Canvas. So first off, what is FriendSmash? FriendSmash is an application we've written to demonstrate a few social things that you can do with Facebook. Um, here you can see it says, Welcome Aaron, so it's got my name and uh, has my profile picture. And then over here on the right you can see some of my friends and their pictures and the scores they've gotten in Friends Smash as well. There's also a challenge button right here and a play button and the full screen button. This is the the thing we this is a thing you might want to do on Canvas for your Unity game to provide a high quality experience. Uh, I'll go into some detail about the challenge button later, uh, but first I'm going to show you just what Friends Smash is like. So here you can see it says Smash Andy, so I'm going to look for Andy's picture come flying across, uh, sort of a Fruit Ninja style game. Oh, there's an Andy. And oh, oh, there's an Andy. Got him. Okay. One more and one more. And oh, clicked on Einstein and said. So here you can see Friend Smash score four. And now that I've talked about just how Friend Smash works, I'm going to move on to the next stage, which is how do you get the code? So exit full screen and pop open a new tab. The uh, best way to find Friend Smash is just Google it, Friend Smash Unity. And here you can see we have an FB samples slash Friend Smash Unity up on GitHub. So I'll click through to that. Just get the link and I'm going to hop on over to one of my shells over here. And I'm just going to say git clone github.com slash FB samples slash friend smash unity. And here you can see the repo is downloading and done. So now that I've got the project downloaded, pop open the Unity Editor and take it from there. So here you can see the inside the Unity Editor, uh, friend smash, it's got uh, some example scenes and some scripts and we'll get into those scripts a little bit later. And finally at the bottom you can see here it says uh, fbutil.cs the name FB does not exist in the current context. Well, it doesn't exist in the current context because this project does not come with the Facebook Unity SDK installed already. There's a couple ways to get this. One, you can go to the Asset Store and search for the Facebook SDK and download it. Or you can go to our developer site, uh, developers.facebook.com, and uh, you, can, you can search for the Facebook Unity SDK and download it. Um, because I've downloaded it already, I'll right click here, say import package, custom package, and here you can see Facebook SDK dot unity package. So you click open, and here you can see the list of files that are going to be added to your project. Uh, this includes files for iOS and Android, and everything you need to run for Canvas as well. Now that that's been added to the project successfully, um, you should see a Facebook menu item up here. It's a known bug in Unity that it doesn't always show up right away. I find that if I click on File, uh, at least on Mac, I can get the Facebook menu to show up right away. So you click Facebook, click Edit Settings, and now we're moving on to the next part, which is one of the things you need to run is an app ID. So we'll go back to Chrome, pop open a new tab, and we'll go to developers.facebook.com and over here on the right side you're going to see an apps link you click on that and then come down here and click create new app so I'm going to call this friend smash unity canvas demo now because we're on Canvas, you're also going to want to add an app namespace. This is uh, uniquely identifier. This is a unique identifier 
for your game, and it's going to be appended to the the Facebook Canvas URL, which happens to be apps.facebook.com. Uh, don't worry about the details right now. I'll go into it uh, later when we get around to building the and running the project. But for now, friend smash Unity Canvas. Unity. Oh, we're on letters. Friend smash Canvas demo. There we go. Canvas dem. Close enough. So for app category, uh, you're going to want to pick games if you're making a game. Otherwise, pick whatever's appropriate for you. And uh, I guess I'm going to call this a, uh, let's say it's an action game or an arcade game. It's more of an arcade game. Let's do that. And click Continue. And now we got a CAPTCHA. Continue. And now you can see we're on the page, uh, the settings page for the newly created app. So here at the top, friend smash Unity Canvas demo, and here's the piece of information you want, the app ID. So I'm just going to copy that, head on back over to Unity, and I'm going to paste it right here. So one thing to notice right here is the app name. This is this is just for you. It's it's not something that gets shared or put anywhere. It's just a way for you to track. In case you ever want to make multiple Facebook apps associated with the same code base, you might do this for testing purposes. You might have a debug build. So let's just pretend, uh, friend, friend smash, canvas, debug. But you know, if you want, you can add another app ID and you can put it there and you can set it to the default. And uh, now that we've done that, um, we head on over to um, head on down here to scripts and now I'm going to show you the code that you're going to run as a part of uh, the the web player project that you're going to be running on Canvas. So I'm going to pop open main menu.cs here and here we got our old friend mono develop and go on down here to the code uh, you'll see there's a function here on GUI you're used to seeing that and then here's the functions you want to remember so there's four functions for making your Canvas game social. The first one is fb.init that's just your fundamental sets up the SDK and does some other stuff behind the scenes. Now that I've shown you fb.init, let's go down here to the next big function worth talking about, fb.login. fb.login is where you ask for the permissions to do the things you want to do with the, the person who's playing your game on Facebook. Uh, in this particular example, we're asking for email, so that means we just want to the, the player's email address, and then publish actions, which Publish, publish Actions is just, uh, it lets you write stuff to their wall, lets you put stories up basically. So these, you know, these are some permissions you might be asking for if you want to do some social things. And the final parameter here is the login callback. And remember, fb.login must be called before you make, you perform other actions because it's how we, we get permission from the user and get the things we need to make the, the subsequent calls. So after fb.login, I'm going to scroll down here to the first of the two major social functions you might want to call to to help spread information about your game. Here's the fb.feed call. So fb.feed, this is the one-to-many channel and uh, when you call this function what's going to happen is uh, a dialogue is going to get popped up for someone playing your game and they're going to see, uh, you know, I just smashed so-and-so, can you beat it? Or And it's going to show a picture and when the person who's playing your game clicks OK and posts this, uh, they're going to get a story in their timeline and the friends are going to get stories in their news feeds. And these stories can be liked and they can be commented on. And next up, I'm going to talk about fb.app request. So this comes in two flavors in the friend smash code paste. Uh, the first is the generic fb.app request. Uh, this is a very simple function, just a message and a title. And this is the one to one channel. So what happens is if, uh, if I'm playing your game and I've got a friend that I think really is going to enjoy it, I'm going to you know, you're gonna give me a button to push, I push it, and I'm like, hey, so-and-so, come, come and play this game. I think it's awesome. And uh, when you call it here without a specific parameter, I'm gonna see a list of all of my friends, and I get to scroll through and pick the ones I think are gonna enjoy that most. The second form of the fb.app request call is if you specify a to recipient. And if you specify a to recipient, then this just means you only want this to go to one person. So I, as the player of your game, I don't get a choice where this app request goes. I just uh, see that it's to the person that you picked, and uh, I say, yep, it's okay for that person to see it, 
and off the request goes. So there you have it. Those are the four functions, fb.init, fb.login, fb.feed, and fb.appRequest. All right, so now that I've shown those functions to you, I'm gonna show you how to build for Canvas, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about what you have to do with what you've built on Canvas to get it to work. So first we go to Build Settings, make sure you have Web Player selected, and click Build. And uh, I'm gonna stick this in a directory called Client, which happens to be in a folder that I've already set up for uploading to the web. So what you get here when you build for Unity uh, for the web player is you get two files. You get a you get a Unity 3D file and you get an HTML file. So here we are. You can see here. Uh, there's the client directory that I made right here. So check it out. And there you have two files: client.html, which you don't need, and client.unity3d. I'm going to talk a second about the Unity 3D file. This is just a package that the Unity web player understands. And if you want people to be able to play your games on the Facebook canvas in the desktop browser, you got to stick this file somewhere that people can get to it from their browser. And what this means is you just have to find somewhere to host a static file. Uh, this, is, this is much easier. You don't have to write a web server. You don't have to uh, do any PHP or JavaScript or anything like that. You just have to find a place to host it and get served up automatically. And there's a few different places you can do this. Uh, I, in particular, am serving this file up with Parse. Uh, it's a great little service. You can check it out, uh, parse.com. And uh, all I have to do to get this file set up on Parse is just say Parse Deploy. And there we go, you can see a new release named v14. So now this, this file is actually accessible in a public place. And in fact, if I wanted to, I can test getting it. I can say curl unite friend smash dot parseapp.com slash client slash client dot unity 3D. And that just happens this last part, client dot client dot slash client dot unity 3D is just the path that I stuck it in uh, in parse the structure and hey look at all this garbage that's the unity 3D file. Alright back here on the developer site we're going to scroll down to this section it's called app on Facebook. So you just click that and pop it open and uh, we're going to do a couple of things. One, enable the unity integration. So that's going to be uh, just the URL I copied from before unite friend smash dot parse app dot com slash client slash client dot unity 3D and the other thing we're going to do is just just select fluid width for canvas. Uh, this is something you're, you're not going to want to have to worry about. You're just going to want to take up the whole canvas. It's a, it's a setting some developers use, but m I suspect most Unity developers will not. All right, now that we've saved our settings, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the namespace. namespace. So you may remember I talked about it earlier, that the namespace is just a unique a unique part of the the URL that makes up how people will get to your app. So it's got to be distinct across all the apps on Facebook. And uh, if you want to get to it, you just you copy it here, friend smash, canvas dem, and then we go here. Then we just go up here, uh, pop open a new tab, and we're going to go to apps.facebook.com slash friend smash canvas dem. And we nav to it. And here you can see, bam, friend smash up on Canvas. Looks like it's working. Let's uh, let's try logging in here. And uh, click here and here you can see here's the permissions being requested. Uh, your basic info and your email address. So you can see it's it's just like the permissions you asked for. Alright, so here we are on Canvas and here you can see logged in and running. Uh, let's go ahead and play a quick game. And see, well, first of all, here's one of the things about coming to Canvas. You gotta go full screen. So you click here, full screen, much better, right? This is what you want as a gamer. You really want this immersive full screen experience. And here we can go challenge. Let's check it out. Look, challenge. Here you go. I can send things to people. Invite sent. Done. Nothing to worry about there. Now I click on play. I smash Azra. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. And another one, another one. And oh, sad Keanu. All right, there you go. Three points. Not the worst score you can get.
Not not that impressive either, but that's okay. But now you can see we got this brag button here. So brag, that's the fb.feed call I showed you earlier. You click on it, check out my friends from Educate Greatness. This game, this game is, unlike my typing skills, is amazing. There you go, this game's amazing. And I can share it, and everyone in the world just got to see that. And now, the other thing is, the challenge. So, Friend Smash does this thing where when you actually uh, click on a particular person, now that I've done it, this is the fb.request directly to Azra. And you can see, there it is filled out, here's what's, what she's going to see, she's going to get a request like this, hey, I just smashed you three times, can you beat it? And uh, there you go. So this is Friend Smash. Uh, just to recap, I showed you how to get the code. I showed you how to, to get set up on the developer site. Uh, I didn't go into too much detail about hosting, hosting your file, but I covered how you got to put your Unity 3D file somewhere. Uh, I went over the code, the four functions you got, fb.init, fb.login, fb.feed, and fb.appRequest. And finally, I built it, put it somewhere public, and Here's the app, showed you, showed you how you can play it. So I hope this has been valuable for you. Thank you very much for your time. Please go give it a try.